Hi everyone, and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 38 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to any new viewers. Thank you so, so much for checking out my channel, and a big welcome back to any returning viewers. Thank you for returning and spending some more time with me talking about Mostly knitting. Gotta say, sewing and spinning, been been on the downhill lately. I haven't been doing any of it. But anyway, <laughs> today's a really lovely, beautiful, but cold Friday in October here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. It is October and I'm so excited. I love October. It is my second favorite month of the year. <laughs> and um, we are doing all the October things here at uh, Casa de Trujillo, so stick around and we'll talk about it. Um, we do have a Ravelry group for this podcast that you should totally go check out and join if you have not yet. It's where you will find giveaway stuff, knit along stuff, and all the show notes for this episode and all previous episodes. In my show notes for each episode, you will find descriptions and links of everything I talk about if I talk about something that is not in the show notes and you want to know what it was or how to get there message me and I'll be happy to clarify so we do have a knit along running right now and I love it it's the deep dark night cal and it's hashtag deep dark night kal on instagram so check that out there are some fantastic projects almost surprises projects <laughs> in the Ravelry group and on Instagram right now. You guys are killing it. I love what you're making. Everything is beautiful. Everything is so appropriately deep or dark or nighttime related. I love it. I love what you guys are doing. So uh, check that out. Join it if you have not yet. It's pretty much where you can craft anything within the theme of Deep Dark Night. Check out the Ravelry chatter group for more info. It's got everything you need to know in there. And we've got a chatter thread and an FO thread. It's gonna run through pretty much Halloween. And I do have a new prize to show you for the knit along. I'm so stoked about it. A beautiful, lovely viewer who has been with this podcast from like the very beginning uh, sent a couple of project bags, one for me to keep and one to give away, and I'm gonna use it as a prize for the Deep Dark Night Knit Along. And it's incredible. So this lovely viewer, her name is Un Young, and she lives here in California like me. Uh, she does not have an Etsy shop or anything. She just sewed up these project bags and wanted to share them with me and you guys. And thank you again so much, Un Young. I love them. They're beautiful. I'm gonna show you right now what they look like because they're freaking gorgeous. So. She sent this amazing little package, um, including, check it out, a chocolate frog. This was from her trip to Universal Studios. It's from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I have always wanted to go there. I want to go there so bad. And she got to go and she picked up this chocolate frog and sent it along. So I'm going to include this in the giveaway, as well as these super beautiful, appropriately themed Halloween looking mini skeins, which are gorgeous. So the prize winner for this one will get both of these and this ghost bag. How adorable is this? And you know what? These ghosts glow in the dark. Check it. So cool. Oh my gosh. So it's got this awesome handle, an orange zipper. It's the perfect Halloween bag and freaking little spiders on the inside. I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I love spiders. So this is gonna be an awesome prize package for one lucky winner of the Deep Dark Night Knit Along. And thank you again so much. This stuff is gorgeous and I cannot wait for somebody to get it. Go in the dark, right? So she sent a second project bag and this is the one that I'm keeping and I am just over the moon excited about it. I'm so in love with it. It's a nightmare before Christmas bag. I love it. And it's purple and it's got a purple zipper. And check out the inside. 
it's got bats. Now, if I love spiders, I love bats even more. I'm a huge bat fan. I love bats so much. They're one of my favorite animals because they're mammals that can fly. Right? I love bats. So thank you again so much. I love this project bag. I cannot wait to start using it immediately. So that is one of the prize donations that we have gotten for the Deep Dark Night Night Along. There are such lovely prizes available, and I will be pulling for those from the FO thread after the knit along's over. And speaking of prizes, I do have one more that I have pulled for this morning from the chatter thread. I am randomly pulling prizes from the chatter thread for mostly patterns so far, and I pulled one this morning just randomly from the thread using random number generator. And the prize that the winner of this one is going to win was generously donated to us by cute Co sorry cozy cute knits who is naomi and she designed a pattern called the spellbound socks and they are gorgeous and she donated a copy of the pattern to give away and i am going to give it away now so i chose from the chatter thread using random number generator.org or whatever it is you know what i mean and I drew post number 63, who is Lindsay, who is lost and fond. And I am so excited about that. Lindsay is an awesome friend and viewer and maker. She's got the lost and fond Etsy shop. And um, I'm so happy she won because she is knitting a pair of like charcoal tweed Gramps cardigans for her twin boys who are like a year, I think, or something like that. It's adorable adorable check her out on instagram she's posted some pictures there she's lost in fun on instagram so congratulations Lindsay. um i will get in contact with naomi and she will gift you that sock pattern they're gorgeous uh so enjoy okay that's the knit along stuff done done i hope you're joining in i hope you're having fun thank you for participating if you are um the next thing i want to talk about is an idea that i had for an Instagram hashtag. So I kind of want to get this started. It is hashtag autumn and sweaters. Now it's a hashtag that I made up. I put a post on Instagram. I think of me wearing one of my sweaters probably. That must have been what it was. And I put hashtag autumn and sweaters because it just seemed appropriate. And then I did it again. I posted a picture of myself wearing my Salal cardigan, which is a cardigan that I love. I wore it to work last week over an orange dress and it was so autumnal and I loved it. And uh, I used the hashtag autumn and sweaters again. And I was like, I really like this hashtag. And my idea is that if you would like to participate, post a picture of yourself on Instagram right now in autumn, uh, wearing one of your handmade sweaters, be it knit or sewn or whatever, or crocheted. Uh, Put yourself on Instagram wearing a sweater and use the hashtag autumn and sweaters. And it's just a casual thing. I want to see what you guys are wearing this autumn. And I know it's not autumn everywhere, but, uh, you know, even if I know it's hot in some places still too. So if you want to wear a sweater, maybe if it's hot, you wait till nighttime and take a walk. You might need a sweater. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm going to check it out all autumn long, into the winter too. Maybe in winter I'll change it to winter and sweaters, I don't know. But hashtag autumn and sweaters. If you want to join in, it might be fun. I kind of just want to see what everybody's wearing in terms of sweaters this autumn. So check it out on Instagram. I put up a couple posts and I hope to continue doing so. Um, a lot of times before I go to work in the morning, if I'm wearing something handmade, I will run out into my backyard really quick before I go to work and take a picture of myself <laughs> what I'm wearing. So that's most likely what it'll be. But um, interpret it how you wish and uh, post up. I want to see. I want to see what you're wearing. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think it's a really cool idea. And uh, I hope to see you there. I will share quickly what I'm wearing. Um, I am not wearing a handmade sweater today. Uh, this is just a store-bought sweater. But... Um, underneath, I am wearing my Agnes dress or tunic, my Agnes tunic. Uh, so this is a Tilly and the Buttons pattern that I wear 
quite frequently, especially on the weekends. It's like one of my weekend uniform staples is this tunic. Uh, so this is the Agnes top pattern by Tilly and the Buttons, and I had altered it to be a tunic. So essentially what I did is I took the pattern and I just lengthened it and cut it off at a point where I wanted it to be and um, sewed it up just like the top, only a lot longer. And it's in this black jersey fabric. I love this thing, I wear it constantly. Um, today I'm wearing it with this um, kind of longer tunic length, navy blue store-bought sweater. This is an ancient sweater. I wear this thing constantly. And I, my goal actually, one of my knitting goals is to recreate this sweater in fingering weight yarn. This is a really thin fabric and uh, I love how it fits and I've never, so far haven't found a cardigan that replicates the shape of it, but I would like to. Um, and I'm wearing it with leggings and wool socks and this is pretty much my weekend uniform. Love this outfit. Um, so moving on to what I've been working on this week, lots of spousal stuff, just like last week, kind of boring. But the first thing that I will show you is um, another little tale of woe. I've been having a lot of those lately, but living in my Cats with Antlers project bag is the spousal hat. So this is a beanie that I'm knitting for my husband and it is being knit out of Brooklyn Tweed. Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the Bird Book colorway and this is a really nice green with lots of different colors of tweed which he really likes about it and Brooklyn Tweed Shelter is one of my favorite non-indie dyed yarns. I love it so much. And I just threw the ball across the room. <laughs> wow. Anyway, <laughs> this is what I have so far. And if you remember what I had last week, it's bigger than it was last week. So you're like, oh yeah, you made some progress. Cool, good for you. And I have a taco on here. Well, the thing is, is that I had finished this hat last weekend. I knit the whole thing. What I had done originally was started it on a size six needle, decided I should go up a needle size to a seven. So I switched about here-ish to a size seven and knit the rest of it. I did some hat decreases that I deemed appropriate, just kind of generic hat decreases, where I split, I divided the stitch count by seven, I believe, either six or seven, I can't remember, to have six or seven wedges. And I decreased every other round until I got to a point where I finally just threaded the yarn through and closed it off. And um, that was it, I was done, I finished it. And then I tried it on him and it fit okay, if not a little tiny bit big. And I know from knitting with Loft previously in a hat for him, that when I block it, it's gonna grow. Because I did this once before, I knit him a hat in Brooklyn Tweed Loft, and then, and it fit perfectly and I blocked it, and it became enormous. It grew so much I could not believe it. Um, around here, I, I, I live in a pretty, um, pretty hippie town. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of dreadlocks where I live. A lot of dreadlocks where I live. And a lot of people with dreadlocks wear these really gigantic hats. They're like knit beanies um, that are meant to hold their dreadlocks. So they're huge. They like, you know, they're fitted here. They usually wear them kind of back. And there's a lot of fabric back here to hold all of their hair. And it looked like one of those. My husband does not have dreadlocks. He has very, very, very short hair. <laughs> so I had to rip it out and re it. And that's essentially what was going to happen with this. So... Also, okay, so there was that issue with the original one that I knit. Another issue is that the decreases looked sloppy. And I'm doing a two by two ribbed hat. This is two by two ribbing all the way up. And um, I cast on 84 stitches for this. And I decided to do, I'm not working from a pattern, I should say, I was just kind of making it up. I decided to do just gener generic decreases for the crown. 
and it didn't look that good in the 2x2 two two rib. Um, I kind of knew I was experimenting and it just looked sloppy. It looked bulky and sloppy and weird and I didn't like it and it the whole thing was just a little bit big on him. And I knew that when I blocked it, it was going to get bigger and I wasn't happy with the crown decreases anyway. So I ripped it all out and went back to a six. So I started with a six. I decided to switch to a seven originally and I should have just stuck with a six. So I ripped it back out just to right here to the point where I had switched to the seven originally and switched back to a USA six. Now I'm knitting this on my Haya Haya interchangeable set with the 16 inch cord and now the size six needles. So I'm back up and I probably have about that much more to knit before I start the crown decreases. Now I'm trying new de crown decreases this time. What I also neglected to mention is that I had knit the crown twice. So the first time I knit it, I s divided the stitches by six, let's say six. I think it was six. <laughs> And it looked sloppy, and so I ripped back and did it again by with dividing it by seven, thinking that might look better. I don't know. And it didn't. It still looked really sloppy. And I decided it was too big, so I ripped it back down again. So this thing's knit, been knit a few times. And now what I want to do, I know this is still just experimenting, but I've looked at a lot of um, projects on Ravelry where it's just a two-by-two two ribbed beanie. And the ones that I think look the best are where the stitches are divided into four. And instead of being like kind of a whirlwind decrease, it's just like a cross. There's all, the, de the decreases go like that because it's split in four. So I think that's gonna look pretty good. If not, we'll try again. Um, there is another way to do decreases on a two by two ribbed hat where it kind of just looks like, I think you're decreasing in the purl sections because it kind of just looks like the two by two rib is uninterrupted, but everything gets smaller, like skinnier at the top, all the ribs. I don't, I don't know how, how it works exactly, but I've seen those. And I don't much like how that looks. I like how the decreases look better when it's just split in four. So I'm trying that this time with the smaller size needle. So I think hopefully I have it right this time. And, um, then hopefully when I block it, it'll be good. I know, I'm kind of throwing things to the wind here, but you know, that's how I do it. <laughs> I'm a, uh, I'm a go by the seat of your pants kind of gal. And before I threw it across the room, I had that ball of yarn. And <laughs> that's because when I knit this hat originally, I used the almost the entire first skein. What I had left over when I finished it originally was that. So that was cool. And then when I ripped back the first time to redo the crown decreases, that's how much I had left over. So now these two. And that big ball that I had left was the last time, from the last time I ripped it out. So we'll see. I don't know if I'll have to break into these or I'll have enough yarn in that ball. We'll see. I do have a second skein that I'll break into if I need to, but I don't think I will. We'll see. So this is, like I said, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. And it's in the bird book colorway. I love this yarn. I'm, it's kind of annoying that I have to keep re-knitting it over and over and over again, but it's for one, it's my own fault because I'm making it up as I go. And for two, I love this yarn so much that I'm happy to continue knitting with it. I don't love knitting two by two rib constantly, but um, I love knitting with this yarn, so it's good. And he is excited to have this hat. And he's gonna have it. It's gonna be done this weekend. Of course, I'm gonna make him wait to wear it until after I show it next week, so. <laughs> so that's my first project. Little malfunction on that one, but we're working through it. My next project is my other project for my husband, and that is living in my gorgeous library bag. These are his socks. Now this is some more solid color tweed yarn, because that is what he loves. 
And these socks are knit out of Brooklyn. I'm sorry. They're knit out of Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in the Flagstone Heather colorway. It's a really lovely gray with the tweed bits being like a light brown, black, and a cream. It's really pretty yarn. As I have said before, it's not my favorite yarn to knit with, but it the fabric that it produces is really lovely. It's really soft, and he just tried these on last night and loves them. He loves the fabric. He loves how they fit so far. Yes. It's my first time knitting socks for him, so I'm super happy the fit on these is good so far. I'm knitting them concurrently, so I've got them both pretty much at the same point right now. And what I have done with these is cast on with a size zero. One sock is 70 stitches around, the other sock is 72. Uh, and that's because he has two slightly different sized feet. Also, I accidentally cast on the wrong number of stitches for one of them, so it worked out perfectly. <laughs> and two by two ribbing for the cuff on a size zero. And then for the body of the sock, I switched to a size one. That's what I always do. And I am doing this column of ribbing down the outside of each sock which serves two purposes one it differentiates the left sock from the right sock since one is different since they're both different sizes and it also provides a little more give a little more stretch because i was worried about knitting for somebody else and the fit being correct and yeah i'm having a lot of fun with these so far plain stockinette which is awesome i love it and I have just finished on both socks the decreases for the gusset. So I did a heel flap and heel turn and gusset, which is my very favorite heel style. It fits me the best and it fits him really, really well so far since I've tried it on him. And I just decreased back down and so now we're just zooming on stockinette until we get to the end and it was funny because these are really big socks i'm used to knitting socks on with a 56 stitch count because that's the size of my foot these are 70 and 72 so they're bigger than i normally knit they're longer than i normally knit because he's much taller than me and i you know they've been good you know they've, they're bigger but they but they've been good and i tried them on him last night and i just got past the heel so I have the whole foot to do and the toe and it just hit me last night when I saw them on his feet how much more knitting I have to do. <laughs> He's got pretty big feet. He's like a, I don't know, a 12, 11 half or 12. No, he's like a 13. I don't know. He's He's got a big foot. And so there's a lot of foot still to knit on this. It was pretty funny seeing these on his feet with just his whole foot sticking out. <laughs> so... There's a lot more work to do on these, but I am really enjoying it. I, of course, love knitting vanilla socks, so. This is what I've got left of the yarn. And again, this is the Knit Picks Stroll Tweed. And it's just a nice gray color. I do have one more ball of this. So if I run out for the foot, I can break into that third ball. But, um... Either way, I'm going to have plenty of yarn, so I'm not worried about that. I do plan on doing my normal toe, which is the rounded toe with the Kitchener finish, and I think that's going to work pretty good. So moving along on these, I have got my, I've got my Lost and Fond Progress Keepers on here, and these were such an awesome birthday gift from Lindsay at my last birthday, which was in May. It's a little panda and a little sheep, and I love them so much. I'm the sheep and Colin's the panda. Colin's my husband, so. <laughs> yes, these are happening, and these are being knit on my high highs, my size one high highs. These green ones are the sharps, and these blue ones are the non-sharps. And there goes another ball of yarn, so my floor is full of yarn. I'm just going to... Leave those there, because <laughs> that's where everything else is, is on the floor. Uh, what's next? Ooh, new cast on is next. 
So I was watching Ellie of Skandeer's last episode. That's the Skandeer Knits podcast. I love her podcast so much. It's so good and so entertaining. And she knits the most amazing things. And she's a designer and she showed off her latest mitt design on her last episode and said that they... When I was watching it, they were out. It was published. And so as I was watching her podcast, I went to Ravelry and bought the pattern and then cast on. (laughs) All before her episode ended. Um, So this is living in my Neon Cats project bag with the lavender zipper. Can you tell I love colored zippers? So these are the Yggdrasil mitts. And Yggdrasil is, I'm sorry if I'm like pronouncing that weird. I probably sound super stupid, but (laughs) I love rolling my R's, so I'm not going to stop doing it. Um, The Yggdrasil is a tree in Norse mythology, and I love mythologies of different cultures. And I love Norse mythology a lot. And I think it's really cool. That was like one of the reasons where I was like, oh, I have to knit this right now because... I just think it's such a cool reference. I love Yggdrasil. It's, in Norse mythology, it's this tree that connects all of the worlds in that mythology. It is super cool. I love it. And so these myths, as you will have seen, because I've put a picture up here already, um, there is a tree on the front, and I just think they're so super cool. So this is what I have so far. Um, I have made a little bit of an alteration of the pattern. First, I'll tell you what yarns I'm using. I am using Knit Picks again. This is some Knit Picks heavy time in my life. I do have quite a bit of Knit Picks in my stash. I haven't, I'm not the biggest Knit Picks fan. I'll just throw it out there. But when I first started knitting, I went crazy with the Knit Picks because I, that's just kind of where I started. Um, When I really got serious about knitting, I thought Knit Picks was just amazing. And they are for a lot of things. And so I bought a lot of Knit Picks yarn. I used a lot of Knit Picks yarn and I still in my stash have a lot of really old Knit Picks yarn. And I don't get that excited about using it, but every once in a while something like this will come along and what I have in my stash is just perfect. So I'm super stoked to be using some stash yarn, some deep stash stash yarn. So these are the colors I'm using. I love them so much. They are not as contrasting or maybe neutral as maybe a pattern like this calls for, but I don't care. I think they're awesome. I feel like they're super 80s stastic. And this is Knit Picks Palette. So Knit Picks Palette is their 100% wool two ply meant for, not maybe not meant for, but perfect for color work. Um, It's kind of their answer to Spindrift, I feel like, and I am really enjoying it so far. So these are the colors I'm using. They are Seafaring is this top one, Uh, Peony is the pink, and Serpentine is the teal. And oops, I think they're really, really cool. So my main color is the peony, the pink. My secondary color, the color of like most of the color work is the serpentine, so it's the teal. And then I've got this one as just like little pops at the beginning and the end of the mitt itself. So let's show you what I've got. So this is the most of the front of the mitt so far. Now I did alter the pattern just a little bit. In the original pattern, you do the cuff for a certain length at a smaller needle gauge. And then for the hand, you switch to a your larger needle and you start right here and up. Um, and in the original pattern, the cuff goes pretty much right up to the base of your hand and then right here, right at the base of your hand, um, the stockinette part, the color work part begins. And I have made mitts like that in the past and I have learned through making mitts and mittens that I prefer the cuff to stop a little more down here on my wrist 
and then have some stock in that on my wrist before it moves into the hand. So that's what I've done. I knit a pretty long cuff like the pattern calls for, but I stopped a little bit short and I started the stockinette down lower. And what I did is I just added some main color stockinette here and then I added one repeat of this little stripe section. That is, you're only supposed to have one of these stripes and I added a whole nother one. So I added maybe a half an inch of length to the wrist before it moves into the hand and we'll see how that goes. I think I'm gonna like it. So the color work that I have so far looks like that. This right here is the base of the tree, this thing here. <laughs> and then that's right on the front. And then on the palm, you've got this pattern that's gonna start emerging. And these are constructed really, really cool. I've never knit a mitt constructed like this before. Usually when I knit mitts or mittens, you increase for the thumb gusset to a certain point, and then you place those stitches on hold. You maybe increase one stitch, and then you continue knitting the rest of the hand with the same stitch count as there was before the thumb gusset. These ones though are different, and it was I was a little confused by it at first, and because I've just never heard of knitting mittens this way, but um, there's a stitch count at the wrist, and then you do the thumb gusset, and then the hand itself has more stitches than the wrist does. So we'll see how that goes. I'm excited to try a new technique. And also the way she does it is that the thumb, instead of being on the outside of the mitt, is more on the front of the mitt. So I'm excited to see how that fits. I'm having a lot of fun working on these. The color work is super fun and super satisfying. I love doing color work. I don't do it that often, but I love it. And the way that I do color work is that I hold the main working yarn in my right hand, like I normally do. I am a thrower, so I'll hold it in my right hand. And then the contrast color, I'll hold in my left hand and do continental. So I'm not the best continental knitter in the whole world. I would like to get better at it. And I always have fun when I do it with color work. That's the only time I really ever knit continental is in color work and I always really enjoy it. So I'm having a lot of fun with this. And I really like how the colors are playing. Like I said before, they're not the most high contrast colors, but I think they look really, really cool. They kind of remind me of like an outfit color scheme from like an 80s movie where there's skiing involved. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. Um, I've never really been skiing, but that's, I feel like a skier when I see these colors. So I'm super excited about this. I, when, okay, so let's talk about gauge. Um, in the pattern itself, it's written with one stitch count, but has the option of several different sizes. That was a first for me too. I've never knit a pattern that was sized by gauge rather than stitch count. Now, something I've talked about in the past on the podcast is that I don't typically purchase patterns when it, like, that are sized. So hats, mitts, clothing, I don't like working from patterns that only offer one size. One size fits all, never fits me, ever. A lot of them say one size fits, fits most, it's never going to fit me almost ever. In my experience, it has never fit me. Um, and a lot of times what I have done when I've accidentally purchased a pattern that had only one stitch count or came in like a package or something, I would go down in gauge, um, but I would go down in yarn weight and needle size. So for example, there was a Helen Stewart mitten pattern that I really loved and it came, I think, already in a like a package bundle that I had purchased. It was a mitten pattern written with one size, one size fits most, and it was written for worsted weight yarn. So I really liked them, but I knew they weren't going to fit me because I have really small hands. I'm a small person. I'm like five feet tall. So <laughs> um, anything that's one size fits all is just going to be too big for me, including mittens because my hands are just really small. Um, what I did is I went down to sport weight yarn and just 
used a needle size appropriate for sport weight yarn to knit that pattern. And I accommodated the gauge difference by just lengthening it, but they fit perfect. So that's what I did in that situation. But typically if I'm buying a pattern, I will not buy it if it only offers one size because that just doesn't work for me. Um, but this pattern offered different sizes. So when I bought the pattern and saw that there was only one stitch count, I was like, what? I probably, she probably said it on her podcast, but I didn't listen. <laughs> and I started reading and noticed that she sizes her pattern by gauge. So she tells you the gauge she got for the needle size that she used. And if you want to knit like this certain size, you go down to this gauge. If you want to knit this certain size, you go up to this gauge. So you size it by your needle size. And that was totally new to me. So I did not do a gauge swatch because I just don't do gauge swatches for accessories. I only do it for garments. That's too much. But um, I assumed that like the smallest thing I could get away with for fingering wet yarn was going to be the one that fit me. So... Her smallest gauge recommendation is for teen women's small. And um, I'm not sure if I'm getting that gauge exactly. I kind of counted my gauge at this point, but I know it's not accurate because it's not blocked. But um, so far my gauge is smaller than what is called for in her smallest gauge recommendation. So is that confusing? <laughs> um, Anyway, pretty much, it, so far it fits fine. Um, the needle size that I'm using is a size zero for the cuff and a size one for the color work. And it's fitting great so far. Um, it's even in my super anal way, a little bit big even because there's some ease on this part of the hand. And for mitts and mittens, I like them tight. I like them super snug. Um, I don't necessarily like when there's this like extra fabric right here, um, but I'm super happy with them so far. Uh, and so we'll see. We'll see how they go. I'm pr they're gonna fit good, I think. They're definitely not gonna be too small. I mean, I say that, <laughs> but you never know with me <laughs> how things are actually gonna work out, but I'm pretty positive they're not gonna be too small. As long as they're not too small, I feel like I'm fine. If they turn out too big, I can always gift them to someone for Christmas because most people have bigger hands than me. Um, but so far, I love how they're turning out. I really, really do. And I'm excited to try this new thumb technique. And I am knitting these on my Chiaogu red lace needles. Um, size one, fixed, circular, which I bought recently for socks, so. I'm pretty much knitting this the same gauge as I do socks, which is great. I love, I love the idea of doing that. And these are coming out super awesome so far. So I can't wait to get more work done on these. I'm having a lot of fun with them. And they're also kind of sparking a uh, my on and off love for color work. So I'm kind of at this point craving more color work with thicker yarn. I love worsted weight color work love it. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that. My last project that I've been working on is my Marled Magic Shawl and I am still crazy in love with this thing. I think I'm kind of almost done. This is living in my Gasly's project bag and I have finished section five, I think. I believe I'm on section six. So let's see if I can figure out how this thing goes so I can show you right side up and out, right side out. I think this is right. Yeah, this is totally right. This is what I have so far. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm so in love with it. I love this thing so much. So I have been using just a ton of scrap yarn for this. The section that I finished since I saw you last is this pink triangle. Weezer reference. That was my favorite album. Anyway, 
<laughs> I loved this section. I had a lot of fun with it. It's just garter. It's a garter triangle. And if you'll notice right here, the yarn changes. I used um, the type of marl where you hold two yarns together the whole way for the section and just the same two yarns for the entire section. And I used uh, some Volum Vine Nouveau in the prickly pear colorway held together with this lace weight kind of bubblegum pink yarn. This is Fiber Nymph Dye Works. I bought two skeins of this lace weight pink yarn years and years and years ago and I have never found the perfect project for it so I used a little bit in this and I think they came out really nicely together it's just this crazy pink section um, but at the end which was right here I did run out of the prickly pear so I switched to some other kind of variegated sparkly pink blue kind of color so I have since started on section I think it's section six but I could be totally wrong What's up, Kit Kat? Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? You protecting the house? Good job. Good job. That squirrel. The cat. So I have since started on this last section here. This is another seed stitch section. And I started it using um, some Moonstone Dye Works in the All the Boys colorway and held it doubled with some Hedgehog Fibers in the Exploding Peacock colorway. And I love this yarn so much. But I decided to switch from that to a lace weight kind of lavender yarn. So this is Moonstone Dye Works in the All the Boys colorway. I'm going to hold this strand the whole section for this section. And I believe I'm going to finish it off the whole section with this lace weight yarn. And I don't have much specific, specific information about this other than I believe it's a Rowan lace weight. And I think there's some alpaca in it. I'm not sure. I will look it up and put it in the show notes what this is exactly, but it's just a really nice lavender lace weight, kind of floofy, halo-y yarn. So I'm using these together for this last section. And it's still crazy fun. I love it. And I think I'm going to be done pretty soon with this. And I'm just kind of following the instructions and going along with it. The only thing that I am wondering about is the tassel thing that's here. So at a certain point in this shawl, you leave all of your ends. Where are they? Here they are. You leave all your ends hanging out. And at the end of the shawl, you braid them and make a tassel. Now, I have gone back and forth on whether or not I've done them correctly. Because right now they're on the back. This is the back of the shawl and they're all hanging off the back of the shawl. I felt like in the pattern it was, I felt like it was clear to leave them on the back. I even like looked at the picture, I watched the videos and it looked like he left them on the back when he went to the next section. But I've heard people talk about this before too, that they left them on the back and they thought they were doing it wrong. And on everybody's finished shawl that I've seen, the braid goes down the front. So I think they were supposed to be left on the front, but I could swear that I like really carefully made sure that I was doing it right, leaving them on the back. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if this is right. I may have to like thread them through to the front because maybe they're supposed to be on the front. I don't know now. We'll see at the end when I get to the point where you actually braid them where they're supposed to be. But at this point, I'm thinking they're supposed to be on the front, but it's just so weird because when I was at that section, I tried so hard to make sure I left them on the right side and I could swear that his instructions were like, 
They never actually specifically said, leave him on the back of the front. But his by his pictures and the way it was described and the video that he had up on YouTube, I could swear they were on the back. But I don't know. I could be totally wrong. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so that's the only thing that I'm like unsure about are these tassels and how they're supposed to be and whether or not I've done them right. But even if I'm done, I've done them wrong, I can fix it at the end. I'll just thread them through to the other side and do it that way. So this thing is coming along. There are a lot of extra cables on this thing because there's a lot of stitches on hold. Luckily, my Haya Haya interchangeable set, I ha with that set, I've got these cute little pandas that are stoppers. They screw onto the end of your cable so that you can use them like this. And I love these things. I bought these separately from my set and they were so worth it. They're like five bucks or something. So worth it. I want more of them. And then I've got another section on hold um, with my knit picks, one of my knit picks cords and the knit picks set always comes with these little stoppers. So I have a few of those. So I've got another section, maybe two to go before I do the I-cord bind off, which I super enjoy doing. I love an I-cord bind off. And I know there's an option for this shawl to be medium size or large size, so I don't know which I'm gonna go with yet. We'll see when I get to that point where you have to make that decision. I'm not sure. So the Marled Magic is a lovely mess of awesome and I love it. Like I said, there's a lot of scraps in this. There's a lot of indie dyed yarn in this. It's mostly indie dyed yarn. Um, there's a lot of Moonstone Dye Works, which is my hand dyed yarn company in case I didn't say that before. But there are a lot of other dyers in here too that I just love and I think are gorgeous and I can't wait until this thing is ready to wear. I cannot wait to wear it. Yes, beautiful, I love it. Okay, moving on. That is all my knitting. I did a lot of re-knitting this week, mostly on that hat. But now I will talk a little bit about my favorites for this week. It is October, finally. I love October, I love it, I love it, I love it. And I have started reading Dracula. I have started listening to Dracula more accurately. And I know a couple of you have probably started by now too. I, as I have mentioned in previous episodes, am going to read the Bram Stoker book, Dracula, for the month of October. And I got the audiobook. I got the audible version with Tim Curry and Alan Cummings. And it's so good so far. I've been listening to it this last week. It's only been October for like a week. I'm like, I think a little more than a third of the way through. It is so good. I love it. Um, I watched the film version of Brim Stoker's Dracula last year for the first time and fell in love with it. And um, so far the book is amazing. It's, it's really good. I super am enjoying it. And I did have to put down a Court of Mist and Fury to read Dracula, but Dracula is pretty short compared to the A Court of Thorns and Roses books, which I'm right in the middle of reading right now. So I think I'm going to be done with Dracula soon and then I can get back to that. But I'm really inspired by Dracula. It's really putting me in the October mood and I love it. It's creepy. It's, it's creepy, but not crazy scary. It's dark in a really beautiful way. I really love it. So if you're reading Dracula along with me, how are you enjoying it? Um, I hope it's bringing some creepiness into your October leading up to Halloween. And yeah, I'm super enjoying it. Speaking of Halloween, I have been thinking about my Halloween costume. I would like to make it, but I don't know. Quite a few episodes back, I talked about how the comic series Saga is having a costume contest right now. Uh, Saga is a really incredible series. It's a comic book. And it's one of my all-time favorite comic books ever. I've got a subscription to it, so I get it every month. And the writer, uh, Brian Vaughn, I think is his name, 
is holding a costume contest. So you can, it's kind of, you know, cosplay your favorite character from Saga, send him a photograph. And it's funny too. It's so cool. He, I'm not sure if he doesn't accept or he just discourages email entries. He actually wants you to take a photo, like a real photo and mail it to him in the actual mail, which I think is awesome. But I was planning on entering that and using it as my Halloween costume, but I never really did anything with it. It would take a lot of planning and a lot of really good sewing skills, I feel like, and like costume making skills. And I just never got my act together, so I'm not gonna do that. But I have been thinking about a costume that I've wanted to do for a long time, and that is Louise from Bob's Burgers. And I have gotten closer to actually making it a reality. I figured out what I would do for a hat. If I did it, I would make the dress and knit the hat. And I found yarn. It's Knit Picks yarn. It's just some pink, like, wool yarn that I would use for the hat. And the hat's got bunny ears. So I would make that up somehow. And then I found some fabric that I have a few options for, but none of the colors are quite right. So my plan for her dress would be the Coco dress by Tilly and the Buttons made in this really weird kind of grass green that Louise wears in the cartoon. And I think it would be perfect. I would make the Coco dress, kind of cut the sleeves off right here. And I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if I do it, but I'm inching closer and closer to making that a reality. I have things in carts on the internet. I haven't actually purchased them yet, but <laughs> I've picked out materials. So I don't know, either I'll do that or I won't dress up. I might do something, I don't know, maybe I'll be a vampire because I'm super into like Dracula right now. Maybe I'll be Lucy. Anyway, my Halloween costume talk is like, I'm all talk when it comes to that. I hardly ever make it like a reality. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. I'm obsessing over it. I'm fantasizing about it, but I don't know if I'm actually going to do anything. A lot of my joy comes from fantasizing about what I'm going to make. <laughs> are you like that? I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people are like that. Um, it's really fun to think about what you could do, right? So... That is all I have for you this week. We have come to the close of another episode of Squirrel Pie Productions. Thank you again so much for joining me. I love spending time with you guys each week. Fridays are my very favorite days of the week. I have the day off of work, my day job. I don't have to work on Fridays, so I spend Fridays with you guys. I wake up in the morning, I knit a little bit, I watch a couple of podcasts, I come in here to my office and I hang out with you guys for a little bit and after this I will get my knitting back out do some editing and then I will dye some yarn I'm having a shop update with Moonstone Dye Works next Saturday not tomorrow but next Saturday and I'll do some dyeing later today I know what I'm gonna dye and I'm super excited about it and um, I will also clean my house Fridays is house cleaning days as well. So I've got a lot ahead of me. And um, also tonight, some friends from out of town from the Bay Area are coming up to visit. So I'm excited about spending some time with them. And uh, yeah, I've got a fun weekend ahead of me. I hope you do too. I hope you guys are enjoying your autumn. I hope you participate in the autumn and sweaters hashtag on Instagram. I'm super excited about it. I think it's a really fun idea. So put on your sweaters, go outside or stay inside, whatever. Take a picture of yourself and throw it up on Instagram with the hashtag Ottoman sweaters and we can all wear our sweaters together and hang out that way. Uh, participate if you would like to in the deep dark night knit along. There's another few weeks of that and there are, as you saw earlier, some amazing prizes to win. So get involved and have a really great Happy weekend and week. Have fun and stay awesome. Bye, guys. <laughs>